The procedure is carried out by using the PPH set of instruments from Ethicon Endosurgery Incorporated. The kit includes a 33 millimeter hemorrhoidal circular stapler, a circular anal dilator, a purse string suture anoscope, and a suture threader. The patient is positioned in the prone jackknife or lithotomy position. The anal verge is gently massaged and dilated before inserting the dilator. It is recommended that the obturator be inserted alone as part of the dilation process. This will help to prevent damage to the internal sphincter. The obturator is then removed and the circular anal dilator with the obturator in place is inserted. This pushes back the mucosal prolapse into the anal canal. The skin is milked out to flatten the anoderm. This will ensure that the dilator is in far enough to protect the dentate line. The obturator is then removed. The tubing aspect of the dilator, which is three centimeters long, will protect the dentate line and the internal sphincter. The flange of the circular anal dilator is provided with four slots in order to secure it to the perianal skin so that it is held firmly in place. The circular anal dilator is fully inserted and affixed to the perineum with three to four sutures. The purse string suture anoscope is inserted through the circular anal dilator, facilitating a circumferential purse string suture of only the mucosa and submucosa. The purse string is positioned near the tip of the anoscope. Use of 2O proline SH or monocryl on a UR6 needle is recommended for the purse string. The purse string sutures are placed close together, six to 10 small bites, to allow better traction of the mucosal prolapse. Each insertion of the needle is near the exit point of the last insertion. The purse string should be at the same level circumferentially. At each stitch, the purse string suture anoscope is extracted, then rotated and inserted again. Rotating the anoscope while it is fully inserted in the circular anal dilator can twist the mucosa and cause an improper asymmetric purse string suture. A finger is placed in the anus and the purse string is tightened to check for a uniform circumferential closing and no skips or gaps. The location of the purse string suture must ultimately result in a staple line that resides at least two centimeters above the dentate line. Once the purse string suture has been completed, the hemorrhoidal circular stapler is fully opened and inserted with the anvil placed beyond the purse string suture. It must be confirmed that the anvil crosses the purse string. A careful examination is conducted to confirm that the entire circumference of the mucosa is up against the center of the rod. A surgical knot is made to secure the tissue onto the anvil shaft and with the help of the suture threader, the ends of the threads are pulled through the lateral channels of the stapler. The stapler is then partially closed, advancing the stapler housing into the anal canal. The stapler housing of the hemorrhoidal circular stapler is longer than in conventional circular staplers and is provided with centimeter marks on top to facilitate its positioning in the anal canal. The anvil is fixed to the rod to avoid accidental detachment, and the stapler shaft is shorter than in conventional circular staplers. As the stapler is tightened, it is gently pushed into the anal canal, while moderate traction is maintained on the purse string, so that the prolapsed mucosa begins to be drawn into the stapler casing. The stapler is examined to ensure that it is aligned along the axis of the anal canal. Prior to firing, the four centimeter mark on the stapler casing is positioned at the level of the anal verge, placing the staple line at the proper height. If the patient is a woman, check the posterior vaginal wall to be certain that it has not been incorporated in the staple line. As the stapler is closed completely, the orange indicator will advance to the low end of the green gap setting scale toward the smaller B, shaped for the shortest closed staple height. Tighter staple compression may reduce risk of bleeding from the staple line. Be certain not to touch the safety until the device is ready to fire. Release the safety and fire in one fluid motion. Keeping the stapler fully closed for approximately 30 seconds before firing and approximately 20 seconds after firing acts as a tamponade, which may help promote hemostasis. A half to three quarters turn of the adjusting knob of the stapler facilitates its extraction.
Additional turns can cause interposition of mucosa between the anvil head and the upper edge of the circular anal dilator. The purse string suture anoscope is reinserted to facilitate the inspection of the staple line and application of sutures to any bleeders. Some surgeons may use spongostan-like products to improve hemostasis or a catheter to detect late bleeding. The donut is checked. It should be a three centimeter wide strip of rectal mucosa with minimal presence of muscle. The removal of skin tags, if present, is not recommended because this will result in greater postoperative pain for the patient.